The story of New World has been a very tricky one to follow. Hidden away in the lore pages and even the dialogue you get from the NPCs themselves, there's so many different pieces to the puzzle and honestly, I still have way more questions than answers at this point. For the past few weeks, I've finally gotten around to sifting through everything I could find. I took a lot of notes on what I learned throughout my time with the game, but I do have to give the New World fans website a special shout out because through their resources, I was able to get the pieces I was missing, and also have a way to show you guys what I'm talking about with information that comes from the New World preview. To give a base introduction, when I say void, I think of it like a hungering darkness or an underworld, a world or dimension from which the dark side of New World might originate. Specifically, the corruption. I gained this idea through over 200 pages of lore and dialogue that I've read through. But it's important to note that firstly this is speculation, and also, there's still lore pages that I haven't seen yet. The ones that come from Brightwood and Eden Grove are the ones that I haven't been able to get my hands on. But if anyone captured them, I'm down to read them. There's also plenty of other topics that I would love to go over in the future surrounding New World's lore that I've learned about like the Siren Queen, those who follow her, and other details about a term itself, but today we're focusing on the Corrupted. Now the Corrupted, if you don't know, are one of the enemy factions we'll encounter and fight against in New World. Before we can talk about understanding them, it's important to talk about and understand their opposites. The Ancients is the main one we'll focus on here. Now the Ancients were, just like the name suggests, an ancient civilization on the island that was capable of harnessing the power of Azoth. That's the mystical mineral or energy that flows through the island itself, as well as the life, the resources, and a lot of the structures that exist on it. Azoth is a resource that people in this world have been trying to understand for a long time. New World takes place in an alternate version of the 1700s, but the story of Eternum spans over many, many centuries. It's an island that's locked in time, and we've already talked about how there's been evidence of multiple civilizations visiting it, such as the Romans, the Vikings, and in lore, there's mention of the Greeks, Egyptians, Chinese, even most notably Spartans in relation to Greece were mentioned in some of the lore. But outside the world of Eternum, I found that the world around the island seems to mirror much of our own. The seven wonders of the world were mentioned in one of the quest lines, and what that means is that there are in fact many more layers to this game than we initially anticipated. Right now in modern times, we do of course have our own description of what the seven wonders are, but during the 1700s they were listed as the following. The Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, Statue of Zeus at Olympia, Temple of Artemis at Ephesus, Mausoleum at Halicarnassus, Colossus of Rhodes, and the Lighthouse of Alexandria, which I'm hoping is a hat tip for the future. Now it might sound like we're just talking about random things here, we kind of are, but I want you to bear with me because this will all start to zero in on my theory later. Now back to the Ancients. The skeletons that we've seen on the island, as we already knew, were not the real Ancients. They are what are known as Ancient Guardians, alongside these two animals we've identified so far. Now some of the lore and dialogue of settlers on the island speculate that these were actually the servants of the real ancients. These ancient guardians have picked up the defense of the ancient secrets, and a few of them have even picked up some of their magical talents. Now the ancient statues that were made long long ago, these feature a split head down the middle, and four arms but two legs. Here's a random fun fact that is similar but not entirely parallel. According to Greek mythology, humans were originally created with four arms, four legs, and a head with two faces. Zeus, fearing their power, decided to split them into two separate parts, condemning them to spend their lives in search of the other. Now of course these ones do have a face split down the middle, and four arms, but they only have two legs. But that's not really anything to go off yet. Let's keep going. For the ancient guardians themselves, people that have studied them notice that they are locked in an unending trance, a duty to defend these ruins by any means necessary. And they don't have a traditional heart in their chest, but an actual sphere with ancient engravings on it. I want you to remember that. Just about anything and everything in Eternum can also regenerate, or in game terms, respawn to a certain degree. Sometimes people that die on this island don't come back the same, sometimes people that die near the island really don't come back the same, and depending on what you come into contact with, like a corrupted or ancient, or if you find yourself involved in a sacrificial ritual, you might turn into something else entirely. Even these ancient guardians are capable of resurrection, and from what I've seen in-game and in the lore, they seem to be more prone to doing it than the rest of us. It's also minor, but a little interesting to note that even among the ancient guardians, they have their own assignment squads and leadership that can keep them in line. Doesn't seem to be one universal leader, more like one leader per ancient ruins to keep everybody alert and ready. 
Now the process of becoming an ancient guardian is something that I'm still incredibly curious about, but the closest thing I've seen to awakening one are two scenarios. One where a researcher named Grenville took a trip to a site dedicated to the ancients, and through his research and quest for knowledge of the great spheres, ended up turning against his fellow comrades and getting lured into activating one of these spires where the ancient guardians patrol quite a bit. This scenario suggested as if he was tricked by the island itself with false visions of hope and happiness. And the second one is one of the stories that had driven me crazy for months trying to piece together. I'll go into it in more detail later, but this was a scenario where the settlers were trying to fight against the corrupted on a bridge located in Great Cleave, but were wildly unsuccessful until the ancient guardians awoke and swooped over those corrupted without mercy. Now the big question becomes, what exactly are they guarding, where are the real ancients, and what created the corrupted? Before them, it seemed that the Withered, aka the Lost, and the Angry Earth were the main entities on the island along with the Ancients. The oldest documentation that I've seen is written by a woman named Hazel. Through her story, I was actually able to learn way more about the Ancients than I anticipated. While I was reading this, I initially took it as another story that came after the Corrupted and Shattered Mountain were already here. But no, Hazel is way more than meets the eye. At first she talks about how she had left her people behind and no longer wanted to be a part of the world as much as travel within it. She mentions the ancient road when she tells a story about how she tried to help someone that was lost and directs them to it, which a few of the roads inside Eternum do have some backstory of their own, but let's keep going with Hazel. In one of her next stories, she talks about troops that are marching along the road. They greeted tradesmen and fishermen alike, and did not seem to be marching to a destination. They did not seem to be evil men, at least not yet. But Hazel did recall their strange banners, hence the name of the journal page, The Banners of a King. Now normally I'd be like, okay maybe this is just a settler banner or something, but then it hit me when I was rereading. We don't have any kings in the present day of New World, nor were there mention of them. And in fact, the highest hierarchy we have in these settlements is the position of governors, or maybe magistrates if you go by the NPCs. Now if that's not enough to go by, look at this. Journal title, This Devil's Peak. She says that she traveled north long ago to a mountain that was touched by poison. The mountain loomed over all and in its shadow, smaller shadows toiled. In the next page, now Devil's Crown, she said that she returned to the mountain years later. Perhaps 10 summers, aka 10 years had passed, or perhaps a hundred. But the mountain had grown very angry, and now wore a stone crown that rested in the air above it. There's only one mountain that could possibly be. We know it as the mountain that shattered, but Hazel, I think Hazel saw it before it began. Directly after this she starts talking about how she finds this strange talisman, one that when she throws it into the water, the mud starts to grow a strange red moss, followed by evil looking men seen walking in the water, eyes that run red, countless battles, yet they wade through it without a care, as if it gives them strength. And then she says, traveling back to the ancient capital will require going through the desert now. Now remember that, but let's back up a little bit. Shattered Mountain. We know now it seems to be the birthplace and home base of the Corrupted. Now directly north of Weaver's Fen isn't exactly Shattered Mountain, but she's describing it perfectly. I don't know what else it could be. However, directly east of Shattered Mountain and Great Cleave is Eden Grove. This is where it's rumored that some of the first deposits of Azoth ever appeared. Now much similar to the corruption, there is something that comes from Eden Grove called the Blight. To understand one, it's best to look at the other, because both of them seem very similar. Blight is described as a nature sickness that even the corrupted themselves don't want anything to do with. I have seen dialogue mentioning how they seem to actively avoid it, and even the angry earth don't try to go near it because it can corrupt them especially, and turn them into something even more monstrous, except for some of the strongest dryads that are actually very resistant to it. Only seen one or two accounts of this so far. Now the interesting thing about the blight is that it's theorized to start appearing in areas where there's a lack of Azoth. I'm assuming a huge lack to be precise. And the ancients just so happen to be very proficient in harnessing the Azoth. And of course just by the name, the earth is pretty damn angry now. So the poison that Hazel was talking about, I'm not so sure that was actual poison. And the capital? We'll talk about that later, but I think I know its name. I think it was the Blight. And I also think that the ancients might have been harvesting Azoth from there, or the Blight may have just been there to begin with and it got worse over time. Now here's the important thing to know about Hazel. She does mention a demon in one of the next pages of her journal, and I think people have talked about this specific page before, but I don't think that entity is anything special because the corrupted in general seem to be extremely new to her. That could be anything. On the last page, she talks about her journey and 
how she's tired and ready to rest, even though she has just as much strength as when she arrived. But, she says that she could leave the island if she wanted to, or at least that's how I interpret it. Thing is, in the starting cinematic before we create our character, Eternum is shown as having a veil around it in the form of a huge storm, one that I've learned also seems to work against sailors when they get close to it. And also there's some detail about how the ship captains that are sent to this island never get warned about this veil. They get sealed orders that are opened at sea just to give basic instructions on how to get here. Though sometime during Hazel's lifetime in the current day Eternum, this veil comes up out of nowhere, the corrupted show up, the ancients are gone, and the big green mountain becomes oh my god it exploded mountain. And I think, this all comes back to the ancients, the opposites of the corrupted. Here's what I'm thinking. The ancients have this kingdom, they can harness Azoth, but when you do that, you also create the Blight if you do it too much. The Blight is super contagious to us as it probably is to the Corrupted. The Corrupted fear it and they tend not to mess around near it. Now the ancients throughout the lore are revealed to be astronomers. They studied the stars. And some of the devices and technology they used were far far more advanced than those of the old world and the current world. The lookout towers and some of the spires that I've seen in the lore and the quest dialogue just so happen to be named after Greek constellations, or related to Greek mythology in some way. If I remember right, I think the Greeks first existed as early as 8th century BC, which if I also remember, is around the time if not later where ancient Romans were first starting to appear. So if we match what we know with the Game Awards trailer, the Romans in this trailer are shown to arrive. But by then, because of how they touch Isabella's amulet, they're already capable of being corrupted. Now just to give an example of lookout tower names and stuff that I've seen, we've got ones like Hercules, Ursa, Canis, Leo, Lupus, Norma, Orion, Octans, Draco, Hydras, Delphinius, Cygnus, Lyra, and Vega. These are the names the ancients used to name these obelisks and lookout towers of theirs that then aided them in measuring the stars. Thing is though, who gave them this knowledge and where did they come from? Some of these structures like the shattered obelisk. They're so high in the air and built so perfectly that you would need incredibly skilled builders to do the same with regular people. This specific one defies the laws of gravity just like the Shattered Mountain does, and it's described as being at the center of all their towers. People have also rumored that some, if not all of these were completely sprouted out of the ground or built using some other mystical means. Now on the religious side of things in Eternum, there's a mention over and over of a god named Providence. Some of the settlers and even the Covenant themselves seem to believe in it, which divine providence is usually something associated with a god. Now the only other god that I've ever seen mentioned directly by name, from all that I've seen so far, is Poseidon. Yet again, from Greek mythology. Now I think you might already know where I'm going with this. In terms of the ancients, judging from Hazel's journal, I believe that some of them, or their leaders, might have actually looked similar to what these statues look like and or maybe they lived with deities that they worshipped in exchange for knowledge, power, and the comfort that they provided. As I said, there's currently way more questions than answers, but I knew that before we talked about the Void and the Corrupted, we had to talk about the Ancients. Now in terms of religion in general, the Corrupted have this too, and I think that they have a god of their own. We already know that they have real churches, and the priests among their ranks that in some cases can actually lead them into battle. And, whatever religion or whatever the ancients worshipped and did some of these documented sacrifices for, the corrupted do recognize it. There was one quest that wanted us to travel to a cavern filled with ancient guardians and find out why the corrupted were never able to go there. Something had been pushing them back or warding them away. But the wardens and greyjacks, aka settlers, had no idea what it was. And then I saw, they were beetleless. These are sacred stones that were worshipped and dedicated to the gods or revered as symbols of the gods themselves. And yes, they did appear in both Greek and Roman mythology too. But why would a seemingly mindless corrupted even give a second thought to some random sacred stone dedicated to gods? Why would it actually keep them away? It's like a bear being afraid of an invisible line in the sand that you draw in its territory. Unless, there's something religious based about the corrupted too. And, 
they aren't as mindless as they seem. They actually do have their own language, which I was able to find out about a while ago. And some of these documents, although we can't translate them, are very interesting with what they might represent. On top of that, the corrupted do have churches of their own, they do have their own worship practices, and even sacrifices that they make. On top of that, we did meet a little known lady during the Game Awards trailer who seems to be a very important figure to the corrupted. That lady is Isabella, and I've been waiting for any scraps of info at all to pop up about her. And oh yes, I cannot wait to tell you a few things about what she's been doing. I think we will definitely, definitely be seeing her in the future. But first, I think we'll have to end it there as part one for this lore, because the next part will also deserve its own video. I've told you a little bit about the Ancients and their Guardians, a few details surrounding the island plus the world around it, but honestly, this just scratches the surface. There's a hell of a lot of detail in this game, and I'm actually sad that it took me this long to convince myself to compile and read it. They need to get some cinematic storytelling in here like cutscenes or dialogue windows where you interact more with the NPC through conversation. Something of that nature to get the player more interested in the story. Maybe even flashbacks with characters like Hazel, but we'll continue on that in the next one. For now, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in part two.